Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, I had hamburger steaks on the meal plan, but when it came time for dinner, that just wasn't sounding good to me, but I had the ground beef thawed, so I decided to make meatloaf. Now, I've shared how I make my meatloaf before my channel. I'll find that video and link it down in the description box below. I don't measure. I just eyeball things, but I tried my best to measure for that video, but it's really easy. I just take some ground beef, uh, diced onion, some minced garlic, salt, pepper, ketchup, egg, breadcrumbs, Worcestershire sauce. I mix that together and then form it into a loaf. And then for the topping, um, I do ketchup, brown sugar, a dash of Worcestershire sauce. And then sometimes I'll put just a little bit of barbecue sauce in it. I mix that up and spread it over the meatloaf. And then I bake it at about 350 degrees for about 45 minutes or so. And then I allow it to sit for 10 to 15 minutes before I serve it. For a side dish, I had a can of baby lima beans in my pantry that I wanted to use up, so I cooked those. I just cooked them the same way that I cook Mandy in the Makings green beans. I will link that down in the description box below. And then for the other side, just kept it really easy this night and made some Velveeta shells and cheese. Just cooked it according to the package instructions. Now, my husband doesn't love lima beans. I mean, he would eat them and not complain, but I know he doesn't love them, and I only had one can, but I did have one of the small cans. I think it's like the seven and a half ounce or eight ounce cans of keys and keys, <laughs> peas and carrots in my pantry that I needed to use up, so I decided to warm that up for him. Now, this picture was taken before I warmed it up. He was at the gym this night, so we didn't eat at the same time. I did warm it up for him, though, um, before he ate, but I just took the peas and carrots, drained them, added a little pat of butter and salt and pepper, and then warmed it up in the microwave. All right, here's a picture of my plate, so I have some of the meatloaf, the shells and cheese, and the lima beans. This was delicious, totally hit the spot. We had it in the meal plan to go out for date night later in the week, but we went ahead and went out this particular night because one, I just was not feeling great this day, and two, I was really, really craving a steak. Um, and so we hadn't been to Longhorn in a while, so we decided to go there. To get started, they brought out some bread and butter, and we had had a really, really light lunch, and it was pretty early that day, so we were kind of famished, so it was nice to have the bread, you know, as soon as we sat down to start with. And then we both got salads with our meal. I got ranch dressing, and then my husband got a uh, Thousand Island dressing. For an appetizer, we got their, I think it's called the white cheddar stuffed mushrooms. This is our first time getting them. They were delicious. And then for our entrees, we actually ended up getting the exact same thing. Uh, we both got their filet and shrimp and then the sweet potato um, as the side dish. Now, our eyes were bigger than our stomachs, although we felt famished and we had plenty of leftovers like we had one entire baked sweet potato um half of my steak some of my shrimp um that we had for lunch the next day but that was our dinner this night For dinner the next night, I made chicken parmesan sliders. Super quick and easy dinner to put together. You don't need a whole lot of ingredients. So first up, we've got some slider buns. This was my first time trying these Pepperidge Farm butter slider buns. They were good. I'll definitely buy those again. Then we have some pasta sauce. I just had this jar of great value in my fridge that I needed to use up. So that's what I'm going to use. We need some type of chicken nugget or chicken for the chicken parmesan sliders. I have these refrigerated chicken tenders. So I'm gonna use those and just like cut them in half. Uh, but again, you could use chicken nuggets. If you don't wanna use um, like anything frozen, you could of course cook up your own chicken Parmesan. Or if you don't want anything fried, you could just do grilled chicken, leftover rotisserie chicken. Just use your imagination. Use whatever you got on hand or what you prefer. And then we of course need some cheese. I have these mozzarella cheese slices, so that's what I'm gonna use. You could use shredded cheese, of course. I'll of course have the recipe linked down in the description box below. To get started, I have the oven preheating to 350 degrees. I halved the recipe, by the way. And what I've done here is I've taken the bottom of the slider rolls, I've placed them onto a grease cookie sheet. I'm gonna place these into the preheated oven and pre-bake them for about three minutes. 
For the chicken, while the oven was preheating and the bottoms of the rolls were pre-baking, I went ahead and cooked up the chicken. I just did it in the air fryer. You could bake them in the oven, of course. Just cook them according to your package instructions. For the tops of the sliders, we're going to make a seasoned butter. So we're going to use some garlic powder, Italian seasoning, grated Parmesan cheese, and butter. And all I'm going to do is add all of that to a little saucepan and cook it over about medium-low heat until the butter is melted. To assemble the sliders, here I'm touching the buns. I just wanted to make sure they were a little toasted. I'm going to place down the chicken. Next, I'm going to add some of the pasta sauce. And I did serve some of the remaining sauce on the side for dipping. And because this had been in my fridge, I went ahead and just popped it in the microwave for a few seconds. If you're using room temperature sauce, I don't think that's necessary. Next, I'm going to add some of my sliced cheese and then the tops of the slider rolls. Then we are going to brush the tops with that seasoned butter. And like I said, I put it into a saucepan. You could, of course, just microwave it if that's easier. Now, the recipe did say at this point to cover this with foil and bake this for 15 minutes, uncover it, bake it for another three to five minutes. I don't know what I was thinking. I just forgot to cover it with foil. It turned out just fine. Ended up baking it for 15 minutes and the cheese was melted, you know, just fine. All right, here are the finished sliders. And then for uh, serving this up, I just kept it really easy again this night. This night was, uh, this night, this week was all about easy meals. I don't know if you can tell or not. I wasn't feeling so hot, so I just went for easy stuff. And I just did some veggies and a little bit of ranch dressing for dipping. But this dinner was delicious and it was super quick and easy to put together. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for creamy carbonara pasta. I had some diced pancetta in my freezer that I really wanted to use up. I thought carbonara would be a great way to do that. Now, this was a fail, <laughs> but I wanted to go ahead and share it with you um, just to show you this was real life and we turned a fail and to dinner we saved it somehow um so i'll link the recipe down in the description box below i do not recommend it though just put that disclaimer out there I, honestly i was a little skeptical of it anyway uh, the reason for that is so typically carbonara pasta um you know you cook up your pasta and then you whisk together like eggs parmesan cheese um and then uh you know mix that along with like some of the pasta water together I like really creamy carbonara pasta though. And I'd seen this recipe where you, it's almost like you make an Alfredo sauce and then whisk the eggs into that. That made me a little bit nervous um, because I was like, aren't the eggs just gonna curdle? Um, but the recipe swore up and down that it didn't and that it came out just fine. So I decided to try it, but my fears quickly became a reality. It turned into a ginormous hot mess, which you will see in just a second. <laughs> All right, but anyway, so to get started, I have boiled up some pasta. I drained it and I set it to the side. In this skillet, I'm gonna add in that pancetta. Like I said, I happen to have this in the freezer, so I just let it thaw. Um, you could, of course, just use regular bacon if you would prefer to do that. But I'm gonna cook that up. Once it's crispy, I'm going to remove it to a paper towel lined plate with a slotted spoon and set that to the side. To that same skillet, we're gonna add in the half and half, and then here go the eggs. Now, I did what I could. I had the half and half at room temperature. I had the eggs at room temperature. I whisked like crazy, but still, you'll see how it turned out. <laughs> um, next, I added in the freshly grated Parmesan cheese, as well as the black pepper. And at this point, it looked okay. I was like, hey, this is working. But uh, as you can see here, I dipped my spoon in to give it a taste to see you know, if it needed some salt, pepper, and yeah, it was so curdled. So I thought, well, maybe I can try like running it through a sieve and getting out some of that egg. And as you can see, it was just like completely separated. So at that point I was like, yep, this is trash. Um, but I had, you know, everything on hand, luckily, to make just a regular Alfredo sauce, so that's what I did. I've shared this several times before my channel. I'll have it linked down in the description box below. Super easy. You just melt some butter, add in some garlic. If you don't have fresh garlic, just use garlic powder. And then we're going to add in heavy whipping cream. The heavy whipping cream is kind of essential to making a homemade Alfredo sauce. That's what's gonna help it to thicken up. So once the cream starts to get thick, I added in the shredded Parmesan cheese, some freshly cracked black pepper, taste it, see if you feel like it needs any additional seasoning. And then um, I'm gonna add the cooked pancetta back 
some of the, um, not some of, all of the cooked and drained pasta. And then I decided to add in some frozen peas. I had just a few left in this bag and I wanted to use it up. I'm going to add that, give it a stir, and then I cook that for just a few seconds to allow everything to heat up. And then that's it. That'll be done. All right, here is the finished Alfredo. To serve it up, I just added a little sprinkling of uh, the shredded Parmesan cheese and some chopped fresh basil and ended up being delicious. Just basically, it went from carbonara to Alfredo sauce. But, um, you know, when things like that happen in the kitchen, don't stress, don't worry, just pivot, make something else. There's always PB and J or you know, whatever else. Um, don't stress yourself out. It happens to all of us. I mentioned in my last grocery haul that I went through my freezers recently and made an inventory and there's quite a bit of stuff that I really, really need to cook through um, and rotate through. So um, you'll hear me say a lot in my next several videos, you know, I need to use this up. I had this on hand and that's why. And one of the things I had in my freezer was I had just two ahi tuna steaks. Um, I get those from Aldi. They are sushi grade. We've gotten them for years. They are delicious. We like to make sushi bowls or poke bowls out of them and also seared ahi tuna. Um, so tonight for dinner, we are making the poke bowls. So to get started, I'm going to make some sushi rice. This is really easy. We need some rice and then to kind of season it up, we're going to use some rice vinegar, sugar, and a little bit of salt. I'll have the recipe for uh, the sushi rice that I use linked in the description box below for you. And what I've done here is I cooked up some rice. I first placed it into a strainer, rinsed the rice with cold water until the water ran clear. And then I cooked it up in my rice cooker and then I allowed it to cool for a couple minutes. And then I'm going to combine the vinegar, sugar, and salt, drizzle that over the rice, give it a stir, and then allow the rice to cool. Gary really likes spicy crab or spicy tuna in his poke bowls or sushi rolls. So I decided to make that for him. It's super, super easy and it's actually really budget friendly. So, I mean, you can use fresh crab, real crab, of course, if you want, but pretty much all the restaurants that um, we've ever been to that have poke bowls or sushi bowls, they use a spicy crab. They use the quote unquote crab, which is basically just white fish. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna use. I got these little snackers. They were like a dollar or something. And all I'm gonna do is shred those up with two forks and then add a little bit of mayonnaise, add a little sriracha to taste. Bam, you've got spicy crap. All right, here's what I'm gonna use for Gary's um, poke bowl. This particular night, I wasn't hungry at dinner time, so I made my dinner later. Now, this looks like a lot. Yes, he likes quite a bit on his bowls. I like mine simpler. Um, use what you like. And if you're thinking, Megan, I don't like sushi, I don't like raw fish, um, you know, I, I can't make this, that's not true. You absolutely can. You can use cooked fish. You could use canned salmon or fresh cooked salmon, um, cooked shrimp, cooked, you know, any kind of seafood. If you don't like seafood, use whatever protein you do like. Tofu would be really great in this. Teriyaki chicken or cooked chicken would be great in this. Pork, beef, just use whatever you like. Don't feel like because, you know, well, I don't like raw fish or I can't eat raw fish or whatever. I, you know, I can't make this. You can just customize it, make it your own. There aren't any poke bowl police that are going to show up and bang down your doors because you use cook fish or because you use chicken or whatever. Use what you like. All right, so for Gary's bowl, this is what he prefers for his bowl. So this is what I'm going to use. Again, make it your own. All right, so down at the bottom, we have those ahi tuna steaks that I thawed. I've got some cucumber, fried onions. We also had these fried jalapenos in the pantry, and I thought he might like those. Got some everything but the bagel seasoning, eel sauce or unagi sauce. You may be able to find this in the Asian part of your supermarket or at an Asian market. I can't find it near me though, so I just get it on Amazon. We've got some sushi ginger. I just get this at Walmart. Some sriracha mayonnaise. We have that crab salad I made earlier. 
avocado, we have the sushi rice, and then some baby arugula and spinach. And then Gary really likes seaweed salad in his poke bowls. Um, I just had him run into Kroger and pick some up. I have made it myself. I'll link the recipe that I use down in the description box below. All right, so to assemble this really easy, I just take the rice, um, then lay down some of the lettuce mixture, and then just basically add your other ingredients and you are good to go. And this would be good, you know, to make for dinner for your family one night because you can just kind of set everything out and everybody can make their own and use what they like that was dinner this night these poke bowls are so so good For dinner the next night, we just had leftovers. So we had went to lunch the day before with my mom and dad to our favorite local Thai restaurant. Um, and we just warmed up the leftovers from that. So for me, I had their um, combination fried rice. So it had like shrimp, pork, chicken in it. And we had a couple extra spring rolls left over. I just warmed those up in the air fryer. And then my husband had gotten their chicken and shrimp pad thai. And so he warmed up his leftovers from that and had that spring roll. And that was our dinner this night. For the last dinner in this week's video, I tried a new recipe for zucchini corn chowder. Now, I made this as part of an upcoming collab hosted by um, Kat from Southern Farming Kitchen, and I think it's co-hosted by Tamara from Southern Wife Everyday Life, um, but that video will be out this coming Thursday, uh, so keep an eye out for that if you'd like to see how I made this. To go along with the chowder, I had this box of Red Lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuit Mix in my pantry. I got this at Sam's. Needed to use that up, so I just cooked those up according to the package instructions and that was our dinner this night all right that is it for today's video thank you so much for watching i hope that you liked this video it gave you some dinner inspiration if you did like this video please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and i hope you have a great rest of the day thanks so much for watching Bye bye